This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I'm going to narrate The Great Comet Venus by David Talbot, 1997. Section titled, 52-Year Calendar Round. Across Mesoamerica, the combination of two calendars, the solar or seasonal calendar and the 260-day ritual calendar, produced an extended sequence of sacred time in which the two calendars concluded on the same day only once every 52 solar years. A cosmic cycle of extreme import. This 52-year cycle the Maya called the calendar round and the Aztecs a bundle of years or perfect circle of years. Interestingly, the Maya never indicated dates in hieroglyphic texts or historical documents by the solar year designation alone. Most often, the date was specified by its designation in the calendar round. Among the Aztecs, this extended cycle was intimately tied to the myth of Quetzalcoatl, who was born on the day Sekta, one reed, and departed on the day Sekta, 52 years later. He will return, the Aztecs claimed, on a future day Sekta. It is only reasonable to assume, therefore, a close relationship between the symbolism of the calendar round and the symbolism of the founding god-king. Mesoamerican timekeepers show an extreme ambivalence about this extended calendar period. Its conclusion was both a renewal to the end of the old cycle and the beginning of a new cycle, and a potential moment of disaster, since the Aztecs believed that the entire world order was then in jeopardy. At that critical moment, the astronomer-priests anticipated world destruction by fire, wind, or water, repeating the great cataclysm that ended the golden age of Quetzalcoatl. The synchronous Earth-Venus movements appear to have figured prominently in the calendar, enabling priest astronomers to draw on the mathematics of Venus cycles to anticipate the recurrence of doomsday. For example, 65 Venus cycles were equivalent to 104 solar years, or two 52-year cycles, which the Aztecs called Huahuelitztli, an old age or long period. To Velikovsky, this role of Venus in calculations of world ages was, at the very least, evidence to be considered in assessing Venus's catastrophic role in the past. The works of Fernando de Alva, Zitlachil, the early Mexican scholar, circa 1568 to 1648, who was able to read old Mexican texts, preserved the ancient tradition according to which the multiple of 52-year periods played an important role in the recurrence of world catastrophes. He asserts also that only 52 years elapsed between two great catastrophes, each of which terminated world age. Now there exists a remarkable fact the natives of pre-Columbian Mexico expected a new catastrophe at the end of every period of 52 years and congregated to await the event. When the night of this ceremony arrived, all the people were seized with fear and waited in anxiety for what might take place. They were afraid that it would be the end of the human race and that the darkness of the night may become permanent. The sun may not rise anymore. It happened that the end of the cycle occurred in mid-November 1507, and available records give us a good sense of the collective fears embedded in the symbolic rites of renewal. It is said that five priests moved in procession with a captive warrior out of the city, to Nochtitlan, to the great ceremonial center on the Hill of the Star. The occasion was preceded by ritual extinction of fires across Mexico. The casting of statues and hearthstones into the water and rites of sweeping all of these gestures bearing a significant symbolic tie to an ancient cultural memory of catastrophic transition. We are also told that on this frightening occasion, women were locked in granaries to avoid being turned into man-eating monsters. Pregnant women donned masks of megway leaves and children were kept awake to keep them from turning into mice while asleep that these fears traced to the cosmic night and the associated chaos hordes should become clear in the course of this series. For on this one night in the calendar round of 18,980 nights, the Aztec fire priests celebrated when the night was divided in half. The new fire ceremony that ensured the rebirth of the sun and the movement of the cosmos for another 52 years. This rebirth was achieved symbolically through the heart sacrifice of a brave, captured warrior specifically chosen by the king. We are told that when the procession arrived in the deep night at the Hill of the Star, the populace climbed onto their roofs. 
With unwavering attention and necks craned toward the hill, they became filled with dread that the sun would be destroyed forever. When the priest astronomers did confirm that the heavens were still in order, the country broke into celebration. The sacred fire was rekindled. Houses, roads, and walkways were swept clean and normal life resumed, the gods having granted man another 52-year cycle. As in the case of disaster portents, the fears implicit in the calendar symbolism flowed from a core idea of recurrence. In the same way that the appearance of a comet, the rising of Venus, an earthquake, or eclipse recalled the world-ending catastrophe, so did the calendar system, undeniably related to observed Venus cycles, rest on a memory of former upheaval when heaven fell into confusion. Could the terrestrial king, whose life but mirrored that of the founding god-king, escape the fate of the great predecessor, whose death ended a cosmic cycle? Would the world itself survive a full turn of time's wheel? It's too easy for archaeoastronomers, when chronicling the calendar symbolism, to slip into a state of enchantment over the system's mathematical symmetry, forgetting that there is a far more vital question. What were the experiential origins of the collective fear of a world going out of control? And why did the planet Venus figure so prominently in the calculations of world ages? Perhaps the answer lies in the famous calendar stone on which the timekeeping hieroglyphs are recorded. Enclosing the stone, and thus encompassing the entire cycle or world age, is the twofold form of the great serpent, Wukwadl, the mythical parent of comets. The great celestial torch launched against the rebel powers when the world was overrun by demons of chaos. That the archetypal comet should define the great cycle of time does not surprise us, since ending one world age and inaugurating another is, in the universal tradition, the comet's most distinctive role.